All right, so this is the first of a couple of videos coming regarding Intel 12th gen. You guys have probably noticed in your inboxes today that there is an embargo lift, but you can't show the builds yet and you can't show it powered on and all that, but we can talk about at least some of the physical differences between DDR5, DDR4, uh, and the new Intel 12th gen. There's some cooler compatibility stuff you need to know, and we're just gonna take a look at some stuff that we were sent regarding uh, next gen Intel 12th gen. I'm really excited for this because it looks like this is Intel's answer to the extremely popular, extremely quick adoption rate that Ryzen's had in the last few years from AMD, causing true competition happening in innovativeness in the CPU space. I just had a stroke. The Elite XG270 QG from ViewSonic breaks the traditional ugly appearance of gaming monitors by providing an ultra clean design while still delivering gamers the features that they want most. Features like a one millisecond response time, IPS 165 hertz overclock display, black brushed aluminum stand with tilt and swivel, mouse and keyboard cable anchors and customizable subtle lighting. To learn more about the XG270 GQ from ViewSonic and to see current pricing, click the link in the description below. All right, so I got a few things happening here. Obviously this is Z590 with an 11th gen. I'm just gonna set that aside. This, this is for a size comparison because this is a larger die. For the longest time, Intel, ever since Sandy Bridge, has been pretty much stuck with this exact substrate size. Now, of course, the pinouts and the notches have changed in terms of making it fit in motherboards, but it's been like the same size. Uh, we got some different RAM kits happening here. This is a DDR4 kit from Crucial. This is, um, I, I said in our video regarding Intel fighting back versus AMD that uh, because both DDR4 and DDR5 are 288 pins that uh, you could theoretically put one in another. You can't do that because, and this is obviously correction for that, the notch, why can't I open this? The notch is in a different spot. So although, have I never opened these? Why is this so? So if you take a look here, you can see the slot for the DDR5 is nearly perfectly in the center. And you can see the slot for DDR4 is a little more off-center. The hump and everything is there. There's the same amount of pins. It almost looks identical, only obviously they're not gonna be able to be um, you know, interchanged. So we'll talk about some of the motherboard designs and how they're gonna talk about, or how they're gonna implement that because of the fact that 12th gen is backwards compatible with DDR4. So that is something to keep in mind. Another thing to talk about is speeds. So for instance, these are the Ballistics Max uh, 50, 100 megahertz dims. The fastest production DDR4 that was ever made. <laughs> the starting speed of these Vengeance is 5200. <laughs> uh, the Trident Z here is 6000 megahertz. And these, and then these are the Dominator Platinums, which are also 50, uh, 5200s. This is two sticks of RAM giving us 64 gigabytes because it's two 32 gigabyte dims, which is gonna be more, way more widely supported on Intel 12th gen because of the DDR5's uh, chiplet sizes and the amount of RAM that you can have per module. I always said for the longest time, Intel always give us these ugly little black boxes. A lot of the review samples used to come in these little <laughs> black boxes, but uh, obviously that had changed with 9th gen and 10th gen, 11th gen as well. So they, they obviously cared. But this is not the retail experience, this is the reviewer experience, so it's important to point that out to you guys. I don't know if this is one of those magnetic flaps. Does it slide out? Okay. Ooh, look, it's Alder Lake. I mean, it's named after a real lake. But this is like a 3D, it's like a blow up um, X-ray of the actual chip and die layout. So that's pretty awesome. We can... I'll drop this one instead of the real one, okay? <laughs> if they're there, what's in here? I'm curious. Oh, is that for? Okay, I mean, that's cool. Sure. So here's our i9 12900K and our i i5 12600K. I'm kind of excited for that one because of the fact that one of the things with 11th gen that was a little disappointing is the fact that they, remember, they chopped two cores and four threads off of pretty much i7 and i9. And I think that was just because of the yields with 10th gen regarding 10900Ks turning into 10850Ks. Um, now we have, remember, what is it? 
16 cores and 24 threads, because only the P cores have hyper threadings where the E cores do not, and this is a true hybrid design. I'm really excited to test that out once we fire this up, because I really want to see how the handoff happens with the E core and the P core, because we, we did attend an entire, like a press day thing about it where they showed it in real time, how the scheduler actually will prioritize things based on one, whether or not the OS is being tasked with handling that hand, handing that off or whether or not the CPU is allowed to request and or override. And it's pretty awesome because by default, if nothing's happening, the P cores become the default. But then as the task, and by the way, turning on Affinity would completely undo all of this. So you don't wanna do the Affinity where you ma manually hand out cores, but it can dynamically hand off piece uh, core tasks to the E core if a more expensive, in terms of computing power request comes along for P cores in which then they take over and you can see them bouncing around. It's pretty awesome. Because Asus is a major launch partner, they sent us a major box to go along with it. So what we've got in here is a Ryogen 2 360 cooler. This is the second one, not the first one. So this will changes there because it's one more than the other one. So this is the ROG Maximus Z freaking heavy is what it is. Hold on. Okay, very heavy motherboard. And then other stuff that we have in here is, but look, there's more inside. So if we open that up, they provided us with some Kingston Fury DDR5. These are, how fast are these sticks? 5200. So you can see 5200 is the base model. Usually motherboards are just boring. LGA 1700, the socket's bigger. We're gonna talk about that, but this motherboard contains some features that absolutely blew our mind. Yes, we've already opened this up because we could not wait when this came in, although we couldn't show you guys. This motherboard looks like, just design-wise, it took like everything from the creator, the Pro Creator board and the ROG boards and kind of put it together into one extremely clean looking aesthetic. But if you take a look at the size of the socket, that is massive. And that's why I have this Z590 board here. It's hard to get them side by side. This one's more rectangle. The extra pins are, instead of being a bigger square, it just, they elongated it. So this is where the cooler side of things come in. If the cooler that you have, um, it's not so much about the actual cooling surface area because still the Asetech like AIOs and the air coolers and stuff are gonna cover the surface area of this. If they can cover Ryzen, they can cover this because Ryzen's still bigger. It's about the mounting holes. So if you take a look at the holes on Z590, you can see they are perfectly round and they are a perfect square. However, because the socket is bigger now, they've had to open up to larger holes. Fortunately, this particular board keeps that in mind. Just like if you had an AM3 socket uh, cooler and then AM4 came out, a lot of the times the motherboards ended up having an elongated hole like you see here, that way your older coolers would still fit. So not all motherboards are gonna have this. I can tell you that right now, where it's not gonna be elongated. So you're gonna have to double check. Worst case scenario, just about every brand we've talked to is going to be providing um, updated brackets that you can purchase and or just request at no charge to make sure that your, your old coolers will still work on this. If that bracket is already on its maximum size and it can't go any bigger, then you can get a new one that will fit on this. There is a function on this board that on the surface doesn't seem all that exciting. Why more motherboards don't and haven't thought of this feature are beyond me, but it is freaking awesome. If we take a look at this right here, these are the slot retention brackets here for where you put something in, it locks down. If you've ever had a graphics card sitting here, then you've got a big tower cooler that nearly touches your card, it can become nearly impossible to push that down. So then you find yourself taking screwdrivers and pushing it down and maybe scratching the back plate on your graphics card or accidentally scratching your cooler or just, you don't wanna stick anything metal down in there, that's a bad idea. So what they've come up with is freaking ingenious. You see this button right here? that reduce, re releases the, the, the retention right there. So put it back, check this out. You see it move? Why more people have not come up with this is completely beyond me. It's probably patented now, but look. Push that again, you'll watch it flip open. See that? And now you can just take the graphics card out without having to sit there and shove stuff down in there. So if we go ahead and take a tour around the rest of the board, you'll notice this particular motherboard does not support 
DDR4. So if we try and take our DDR4 module and shove that in there, well, it's gonna be like any other module. You know, if you put it in backwards, how it won't go in. So you can see no matter which way you put it, the notch does not line up. This board does not support DDR4, but obviously it will support DDR5. Now it has to be slightly off, otherwise you could put it in backwards, right? So it's gotta be off by a couple of pins off center. So, ooh, that's satisfying. Let's do that again. So I love about new RAM sticks and new motherboards is they are the most satisfying click. You ready? Ah. So some other notable things here about the Z690 12th gen board from Asus. Um, we have got a full 16X gen four, we've got an 8X gen four, and then we've got what appears to be another 8X gen four because the amount of pins are in there. I assume that's two 8X and a 16X. Um, all of the RGB headers, except for one, are down at the bottom. So you have two ARGB headers right there, one 12 volt header, one ARGB up here. So we have one 12 volt header, three ARGBs, the 24 pin power is on the side, two eight pin supplemental power at the top. Your motherboard supplemental power though is right here underneath it, which is interesting because this is designed to give supplemental power to your PCI Express slots if you were running, um, I mean, you could technically run SLI in this. It would end up going down to Gen 3 8X SLI, not Gen 4 16X times 2 SLI. But this is to give supplemental power if you have big like 3090s or a kingpin card on LN2 or something that can draw way more power than, uh, than you want. Comfortably coming from the motherboard traces, this will give direct power to the PCI Express slots. Other than that, the motherboard um, functions really do carry over and are um, nothing super spectacular. Let's go ahead and take a look at the CPU itself. So this is an 11900K 900K CPU. It's the standard size we've seen for a long time. You can see it's not much bigger, but it's definitely larger and is more rectangle. It's the same width, it's just longer. Take a look at the bottom here. You can just kind of see too the, the pinage, if you will. So it's seven LGA 1700, 1700 pins. And I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to install it. This will make me feel satisfied. Like something came up of this video other than just giving you a little walk around. <laughs> okay, so you have to remove that one first. Yeah, you actually have to remove those first to get it to go down. At least in this one I did. <laughs> Look at that. I cannot wait to turn this on and start playing around with the P-Core, E-Core stuff. I, more importantly, I'm just really eager to test the leaked performance claims, saying that this apparently is giving the 5950X a complete walk around the block when it comes to performance. And there, you gotta take this with a, with a grain of salt. But I can tell you right now, if the performance is there and the idle state is there, because what we should also find is that this is an extremely low watt part when it's not doing anything intensive with the E cores or the efficiency cores being active. As long as you can get past the fact that you're gonna have to be on Windows 11 to utilize any of it, then it might be an upgrade path worth looking at. I am a performance enthusiast. I follow the performance. And whichever team is fastest usually gets my vote. That's why I've been using all AMD in our studio now for the last three years. So we'll see exactly what's gonna come of it when the embargo lifts. And that's when we'll see you guys in the next one. Get in there.